Hi everybody, welcome back to another Game Jam Time. I'm Paul, the Teen Librarian at Gloucester County Library, and today I have another really interesting niche kind of um, game engine for you. It's called GB Studio, and you can find it here. It's gbstudio.dev. <laughs> and um, this is a really interesting game engine because it's basically drag and drop simplicity, but at the end of the day, you'll have a working Game Boy game that um, can run not only in a Game Boy emulator if you want, but you could actually, if you had the uh, hardware to do it, you could play it on a real uh, Game Boy uh, machine. Uh, so that is just really interesting to me to be able to make something that, you know, would have been like a dream of mine back when the Game Boy was around. Like, I can't believe you can make something this easily on a Game Boy. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> pardon me. <laughs> Um, so you can find it at gbstudio.dev, uh, there's a download to, um, to download it on niche.io, and the interesting thing about just finding out about this now is you can see here version 2 is coming soon. This month there's a version 2 coming, and that will um, include Game Boy Color support and a lot more options as far as the kind of games you want to make. Right now, the the, the the options for what you can do in Game Boy Studio are a little limited, but you can see people have made Game Boy games on this thing already. Um, but you're all you're looking at like top-down, kind of Zelda-style looking games, but without combat essentially. So you can do things like there's block pushing puzzles you could do. Uh, you can do like um, finding and picking up items. Maybe doing a trade quest. I did a little trade quest in my example game. Um, just a very short one. Uh, you can do things like, I, I've seen someone make out uh, an RPG style battle menu. Technical difficulties there, hold on. I guess that's what I get for trying to do a green screen on the cheap. Um, <laughs> so what was I saying? So yeah, you can do very simple, someone did a, a basic RPG battle mechanics where you can do like, um, It'll roll a random amount of damage and um, keep track of hit points, uh, so you can kill enemies. Uh, you can level up. You can have critical hits. So there is like some kind of combat you can do, but in the new version, it's going to have real-time combat, like kind of Link swinging his sword. Uh, it's going to have um, side-scrolling platformer options. It's going to have um, side-scrolling shooters. So you'll be able to do a lot more with the new one. But even with the one they've got here, like you can do um, some interesting kind of small game ideas. And um, I will say right now that while there is, if you go to Docs, there's like definitely read through. It's not, it looks like a lot, but there's not that much information there and it's very important to follow it. Um, especially things like sprites and backgrounds, they can only be specific colors. Um, because it is running on actual Game Boy hardware, so it only recognizes certain colors. But if you really want to see what the game can do, what the engine can do, uh, go to YouTube and go to um, Pixel Pete has a long like 13, 13 video series. Uh, we'll show you everything this engine can do, and it'll really give you some ideas of how you can start doing things with it. Really interesting stuff. Uh, he does a great job explaining stuff very easily. Um, another thing you might want to do, a pixel, uh, pixel editing option that I mentioned in the last uh, video, makes it real easy to do Game Boy uh, graphics here. Uh, you can see I have a little Yoshi doll that I use as an item in my game. But you can see here I have the sprites, uh, the palette set up for the exact colors. And if I go into here, the height and width are 16 by 16 pixels. They have to be 16 by 16 pixels in order for these, uh, the program to see it. Uh, unless you're doing animated sprites, then it's um, 16 height and then uh, you just kind of make a longer uh, image and divide it by 16s and it'll just see each one of those as separate images in the, um, what am I trying to say? In the, uh, the sprite. It'll take them as individual sprites, different frames. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and, um, maps, you will do, like, you can download 
tile sheets, and then you put those tiles in a map so you can't just do, like, drag and drop like we've seen before with, um, with a lot of other things like Construct, where you can just take an image, grab it, and bring it in here, or, like, oh, I want to put a platform here and here and here, and then all of a sudden they're there. You have to go and, like, construct your maps, um, in Tiled, which... Tiled is another one that I mentioned in the previous uh, video about resources. I think I called it Map Editor, but that's the web address. It's mapeditor.org. The program is Tiled. And you can see here, these are my maps I made with Tiled. Um, so I took different tile sets. And even though it shows like these are different colors than these, when you run it in the um, Game Boy uh, GB Studio, it kind of takes the closest shade. So even if you find tile sets that aren't quite the right colors, it'll figure it out. Um, so let me just run through real quick what I did here. Just to give you an idea, this is a very simple uh, game where you've lost four NES games and you're trying to find them. Uh, and the way you do that is different for each one. So you have my cat. So here's your character walking around. The first one's easy, it's just sitting right there. Just go over and hit A. And it's Maniac Mansion, and each game I have tied to like a little memory I have of playing it back as a kid. So you can see the game is gone, and if we go into my house here, uh, here it is right here. So this is kind of like a little trophy uh, area you can kind of keep track of. Here's the NES there. Do you want to look your cat? Here! Come on! Come on! No? You're making a lot of noise though. Come here. Come here. I don't know if anyone can see, can you see hi? A very grumpy cat named Tiny. <laughs> you kept on trying to get my attention. Uh, so I did the, the game pack art as uh, on my own. I did this NES here. It's my NES. The other stuff here, you can see... Um, oh, I can only arrow in here. Uh, the furniture I got from a different tile set, and you can see it actually doesn't quite match up. Um, I've got to fix that. I just kind of put it in and was like, I'll worry about it later. But um, the background should be this kind of white, whitish green color instead of the blackish green color. Uh, if you go over top to this cat, I've got a little trade quest here. She misses her Yoshi doll. And if you go into the city here, there's the Yoshi doll. Pick it up. Pick up the Yoshi doll. Get back to her. Yoshi doll, I'll take this comic as thanks. So now I've got the comic. I should have mentioned before, if you go talk to this guy, he says he likes comics. And then if you have a comic, he will trade you the comic for the NES game. And this one's Bart vs. the World. And one of them, you just go over and talk to this random NPC that walks around randomly. I found this NES game, is it yours? Take it. And this one is Chippendale Rescue Rangers. And now if we go back, just block them. If we go back in the room, you can see now three of the four games are back. And we'll say which ones they are over there. And the last one, I thought this would be interesting uh, to make like a little random minigame element in here. It turned out to be more annoying than anything, I think. Um, you gotta play rock, paper, scissors for this guy to give you the game. You gotta win. I um, was pretty proud of when I finally got it programmed in here, then realized, like, playing rock, paper, scissors against an NPC is really annoying, actually. Um, because <laughs> I keep losing. Um, but it brings up a little, you want to play? Yes. And then you choose rock, paper, scissors. Scissors didn't fit on the thing, so it's rock, paper, and as close as I can decision. Let's do paper. He chose rock. Oh, I won. First time, okay. One time I lost so many times I thought I programmed wrong, I was like, am I just losing every time? Is it always picking the winning one? But no, it's completely random. Um, so there we go, we got the fourth one, Bubble Bobble. Now if we go back here, I haven't made an ending or a title screen yet. There's no music, there's no sound effects. But there we go, all four games are back in there. And that is the complete experience right now. Um, but I designed all these maps in Tile, uh, taking assets from different places. Some of them, um, I think I... Yeah, I'll, I'll be able to kind of show you where most of those came from. Um... But you can see the market store here, which was a weird off green, is kind of mixed in here. Same with these. They all kind of just become the closest color, so let's escape out of here. Go back here. 
And you can see it's just a, a series of scenes. Here's the maps, here's the NPCs, and it's showing the blue dots are like where scenes like I will transport if I get a game pack. It goes to the screen here, then it goes back. Um, all of the logic is done over here. Don't need to do any programming, any coding. It's all done logic based. You just put in these events and say what you want to do. Um, for the game packs you're finding, it says game packs here, flag two. Uh, flag two, I think, is Bart versus the world. Um, basically, Game Packs keeps track of which games you found. So flag one, two, three, four are each of the four games, and it kind of figures out what it should be doing when by whether or not those flags are labeled as true or false. Um, all the stuff I found by just going into um, Pixel Pete's tutorials makes it real easy to figure out. Um, and he actually makes a game uh, called Gerb's Quest, and that's where some of these uh, I think like the trees, um, and this the grass and the path, those are all from his game. Um, he has the assets there, you can take them and use them for your own, so I use some of those. The Market Store is another one. If you look for Chasers Gaming here on itch, um, chasersgaming.itch.io, they have a lot of assets that are uh, free. You can see there's a lot of Game Boy ones, but Game Boy Brawler, Game Boy RPG, there's the market store I used. Ton of stuff in here uh, for different Game Boy uh, assets. He has platforming, racing, uh, tons of stuff to look through. And if you even look up like GB Studio community assets, like people are starting to share a lot of things here. Um, since since developing uh, Game Boy games is kind of becoming a thing with this GB Studio, uh, people are starting to make more assets and share them. Including music, so I'm going to look at some, like, music options. It can't be MP3, Game Boy doesn't recognize MP3. It's all going to be a .mod file. Um, so I'm just looking at ones, like, I don't know how to compose, so I'm just looking at ones that people have already made available for free. Um, but you can see the, the, the GB Studio layout is very easy. You just have scenes here. It just says where your characters are. Uh, there's a logo and title screen that I haven't skipped because I haven't designed those yet. And then that's pretty much it. It's real easy to figure out. Um, what else is there to say about it, really? I will say that before you start making any kind of pre-made maps for yourself, like I did with these screens using Tiled, uh, which, once again, uh, Pixel Pete's tutorials go into how to use Tiled. Um, it's pretty easy once you find a sprite sheet. You can make a map very quickly. Um, but I would just use the maps that... Um, it comes with a sample game. Like, if I go to File, New, New Project, and then use the sample product as a template, so let's create that. And you can see you've got a screen here with a quest list and different rooms. And I think there's a block pushing or a puzzle involved here. Uh, you can talk to the NPCs. There's the cat. I just and all the NPCs are from this game sample here. I didn't make my own NPCs. Um, but if we go in and play this file, oops, no, it's over here. Play, and you'll see it does like a logo screen for two or three seconds. Then it goes to the title screen. Um, but you've already got a very simple game, and you can go in and just kind of play around with the maps on here. So I would suggest first, let's press start, new game. And there you go, you're just looking around, talking to people. And uh, so I would suggest, there's the house, I just took the house straight from there. But if you go in, it's a little bit different looking. Um, you can just play around with uh, uh, the sample project and the graphics you're given there and see what you can make out of that first before you start designing other graphics. I just made a few extra pieces of graphics, but I want to go in and eventually um, change like the NPCs and the main character to be stuff that I made. I just haven't gotten around to doing that yet. Uh, I just kind of threw some together to see if I could make it and was really pleased with the fact that I could. And um, I have to have some kind of end screen after you get all four still, but... Um, you know, it, it felt good to just make a small project, and you complete it, and... I will show real quick, uh, putting a new character down is just as easy as hitting Actor. 
putting where you want to put it. And there you go, there's a cat right there. You can just change it to whatever actor you want. Put it, make it a dog. Uh, you can make them walk around, you can make them kind of randomly face different directions. Um, real easy to work with and play around with. Uh, watch those tutorials to try and, and see what you can make out of it. Check out the uh, GB Studio, look at the documentation. Doesn't take that long to read it, and it makes everything a lot easier. Um, although, like, music, sound effects, like, I kind of ignored that stuff because I was like, I'll just be taking it from other places. Um, real easy to learn, fun to play around with, and, you know, easy to share your games afterwards. You can put them right up on itch, and it'll just play in browser, which is really cool. Or, like I said, you can make them run in a Game Boy uh, emulator, or on our uh, actual hardware if you have, like, a flash card. So there you go, guys. That's GB Studio. Uh, if you make anything with it, uh, put down in the comments below like a link to the uh, the game if you put it up on itch. And thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.